Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are in the world today, welcome to my channel. Hey, today I'm here at the Martin Luther King Jr. Center where you guys are gonna explore and learn about Dr. Martin Luther King since his birthday is right around the corner, January 15th to be exact. So you guys stay tuned, keep watching. Hey you guys, so I'm actually standing in a very important art piece, which is Gandhi. This is what the Reverend Doctor, the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King pretty much idled himself around when he believed in peace, when he believed in equality, when he believed in the Emancipation Proclamation. This is the word, actually this is the words he studied from Gandhi. And this is the statue of Gandhi. So we're just gonna circle around for you guys. And actually here, if you want to show here, it says Mohandas Karamachand Gandhi. I, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it correct. Basically, from 1869 to 1948, this right here was donated by the Indian Council for Cultural Relations. Pretty much giving gratitude and thank you to Gandhi for influencing the late and great Dr. Martin Luther King. So this is Gandhi. Okay, you guys, so this is the visitor center. Unfortunately today, or it's been, been pretty much closed for a while due to COVID-19 and safety precautions, but I just wanted to pan around and give you an idea of what the visiting center looks like. Remember, that's the mural I showed you of Gandhi. So you guys, we're still here at the Martin Luther King Center and I just want to point out some very important stuff to you guys. As you see directly behind me is the Martin Luther King National Historic Park where we're at. And then I also want to pan over this way. This is the newly renovated Ebenezer Baptist Church that was actually, uh, I don't know what year it was built, but if you guys know that the current Senator of Georgia was Raphael Warnock, Actually, he pastored this church. So I want to actually have you guys pan over this way to the old Ebenezer Baptist Church. As you see, this is where the late Martin Luther King and actually his father, Martin Luther King Jr., as well as Martin Luther King Sr., actually pastored and got baptized at this church. Okay, so I hope you guys got a view of that. Now I want to also point over this way, guys. This is the memorial site where the late Dr. Martin Luther King and Coretta Scott King both are buried. And we will actually venture over to that way. I just wanted to just point out some important stuff to you guys as well. So as you guys can see, I'm actually here on the 35 acres where all of the important things of Martin Luther King or the King Scott family are here. So you guys, I just crossed the street from over in the visitor section. Now I'm over here. As you see, everything is pretty much closed due to COVID. And I just wanted to show you guys, this is the actual Martin Luther King Jr. Center. Actually, you guys, listen to this, guys. So me and Danielle is actually um, getting ready to walk over to the place of residency where um, 
the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was born and raised, his first 12 years, the actual house he grew up in. Um, Danielle, do you kind of emphasize um, as far as like um, a crossover here is actually the fire station, but did you want to get some brief information yeah, on the fire history? The fire station that was original to the neighborhood when Martin Luther King was born in this neighborhood. Okay, so this is the original fire station right. while he was a kid, this so was here. It's part of his historical site. Okay preserved historical building that was here since his time. Okay. And all of these homes are the homes that were in his neighborhood. These homes over here. The what are these homes right here? All these? They are titled shotgun homes. Okay. Back in that day. And then they're all part of the historical site because they're the original neighborhood built from this. Community. Okay. And I'm actually looking up here. It is actually in the intersection of Auburn Avenue and Boulevard. Correct. Okay. Yep. So, so, bear, so all of this is the neighborhood that Martin Luther King was born in and we're going to go look at that. Okay. So you guys, we finally actually made it across the highway. So these are the shotgun houses that Danielle um, pretty much gave you information on or whatever. So any, any more um, information you want to give them on as far as... We're going to come up on uh, Martin Luther King's birth home right here. Oh, his birth home is actually located up here. Okay. Okay. So now we're actually walking to the birthplace of Martin Luther King. And like I said, you guys, earlier, this was his um, birthplace where he was born and raised and he lived here for his first 12 years um, before venturing off to, um, I think they said some Alabama, Alabama yeah. yeah. And did you guys know that he was uh, actually, was probably gonna go for being a law student, but he pretty much had love and passion of being a pastor. So that's why he was the Reverend, late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Okay, you guys, so directly behind me is the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. house where he was raised at the age, all the way up until the age of 12 years old. I don't know, this is kind of a little emotional for me, so guys, so let me, let me just take a moment, hold on one second. Okay, you guys, so I got a very special guest for you guys, just to give us a little brief history or a little information on the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And this is, what's your name, ma'am? Ranger Daniel. Ranger Daniel. Okay, and what is what do you do here? Interpretation. Interpretation. So we are, we teach. Okay. Talk about his life, his legacy. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, this is the home of Dr. King. So okay. when folks come by, correct, they are able to see where he was born and lived up until age twelve. Okay. Our park reflects the time he was here with us. So this is where he lived, worked worship and now is his final resting place as well okay and At this the is King the house Center. directly behind us correct correct okay this home originally it belonged to his grandparents which is the reverend ad williams his maternal grandparents by the way this was actually his grandparents home correct okay so reverend ad williams was his maternal grandparent okay um and mrs jenny his grandmother okay reverend williams was uh, of course the senior pastor at the ebenezer baptist church okay and dr king grew up in a home with three uh generations so oh wow you know, we're talking about you know his mom and dad as well as his kids and extended family members as well okay okay um, so reverend williams purchased this home um, back in just about 1909, uh, it's debatable that they were probably the first black family to move on come on in after the race right the Oh, wow. Wow. So let me ask you a question. Do you know how long this house here that he was born and raised in, do you know how long this house was here? It was built in 1895. Guys, 1895. Now, can you picture yourself for a moment being born and raised in that time? So he was pretty much born in the 20th century, Correct. Dr. Martin Luther King. Said, wow. And his parents, well, grandparents born in the 19th century, I, I must say, maybe? Yes. yes. Wow. Wow. Well, I want to thank you for your time, ma'am. You're, You're welcome. All right. And um, happy New Year's and, and may God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am.
Okay, you guys, this is um, this is a very emotional moment for me because I'm trying to imagine or picture myself at the age of 12 living in this home. I'm trying to picture myself as a 39 year old who fought for civil rights, who fought for equality, who fought for social justice, sitting on the very steps as you see guys, where he grew up at. I'm trying to picture myself being back in that time. This guy was a natural born leader for the 20th century guys. I'm just taking a moment. The exterior part of the house, what we know today where Martin Luther King was born and raised. Can you guys imagine living here? We're actually gonna go, I'm gonna actually go behind the house so you guys can actually see the back of the house. Okay, so now I'm gonna take you guys on the back side of the house. I'm gonna give you guys an exterior view of what the side of the house looked like. And remember you guys, the National Park officer told you guys that everything that's inside of this house is actually original, everything. So nothing has been moved, his bed's still in there. Everything is just still original, guys. Everything is preserved. This is the back side of the king's house, yard, everything. Our civil rights pioneer was born and raised here. Wow. Okay, you guys, so since I'm not able to show you the inside of Dr. King home as a childhood because of COVID-19 precaution or whatever. However, they do have an illustration of the house inside of the house. So this is what I wanted to show you guys. So basically this is what the front living room looks like inside. And over here, this is actually the kitchen area as you guys can see. And as you also can see, this says this is uh, Martin Luther King Jr's birth home. So, his bedroom, the kitchen area, and the living room. And as you see, it's pretty much they have morals and values and standards just living in the King family and the household. Okay, you guys, so what I was unaware of, if you guys remember when we first crossed the intersection to get to actually the uh, birthplace of Martin Luther King, and I pointed out shotgun homes that was across the street well it was just brought to my attention that residents actually currently today actually live in these shotgun homes so i'm going to pan around so you guys can see exactly what i am talking about these shotgun homes residents actually still live in these shotgun homes wow i did not know that Okay, you guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed um, the tour of his childhood home. So now we actually just came over to the place where he was laid to rest, his burial site, along with his wife, Coretta Scott King. So I'm gonna go around, so you guys are gonna follow me and we're gonna see what we see. Okay, you guys, we just made it over here to the burial site of Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. alongside him with his wife, Coretta Scott King. So here we are, guys.
Violence is not the answer, guys. That's why I wanted to bring you guys to this wall. Documents written by Coretta Scott King, and it says, nonviolence is the most powerful force that we have for the counteracting of hatred, bitterness, and violence, which have infested society. Another quote she wrote, people who think nonviolence is easy don't realize that it is a spiritual discipline that requires a great deal of strength, growth, and purging of the self so that one can overcome almost any obstacle for the good of all without being concerned about one's own welfare. And this was an actual quote wrote by the great and late Coretta Scott King. Violence is not the answer, guys. Okay, you guys, so directly behind me is the original Ebenezer Baptist Church where the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his father, Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King Sr. actually pastored at this church. So I want you guys to take a look around. This is so amazing to be in the moment, to be here, to actually witness a pioneer, to witness someone who stood for equality, someone who stood for justice, social justice, and it's just amazing to me to be here to witness all of this. Okay, you guys, so I made it across the street and directly behind me is the newly renovated Ebenezer Baptist Church, so I just want you guys to take a view of it. So I had to interrupt this video to take a brief moment to pretty much reflect on the Martin Luther King Jr. Visitor's Center. Um, I've learned so much in the past years than I've learned in high school, college, pertaining to, I won't just say black history, but pertaining to like important events that took place and that shaped the world today, or shaped our nation, shaped America. After visiting the Martin Luther King site for the third time, this time was different. This time I had to really sit back and reflect on an individual, the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who sacrificed his life for social justice and equality. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware, but there's a lot of stuff going on in this world today and I sit back and I reflect on the things that this man did to get change in this country. And like I said, when I got home tonight, I was just reflecting on putting myself in his space. He was like a vehicle for change. And it was just some people back then that really loved this guy. And then it was some people that really hated this guy for what he stood for. To me, this guy's nothing but motivation. To me, this great man, all he wanted was everyone to be treated equal as humans. Everyone to have the same amount of respect, dignity, and pride, and for each and every individual to be treated as equals. Blacks, white, Latinos, so on and so forth. Visiting this site on Arban Avenue where he was born and raised, I got a chance and I had an overwhelming feeling, but I, I, I got a chance to actually see and I could feel the eerie vibe of just sitting on the step, as you guys seen in the video, picturing myself being a little boy born and raised in a house that was pretty much the start of something that was gonna become major. And still today, Dr. King dream lives on, his legacy lives on, and still today we celebrate a great man. Throughout all the opposition that was trying to stop him from trying to just do the correct thing, still today we celebrate a great man that did great things and amazing things for our nation. So I just wanted to take some time out to reflect and to say that I'm very honored 
and I'm very proud of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. for having the audacity, for having the courage, for having the faith and the bravery to stand for what he strongly believe in. And that's for every man, woman, child, each individual to just get treated fairly in this country. Even when he went to Tennessee to fight for the sanitation workers when they were on strike, where he later got assassinated. And I was trying to picture myself being a 39 year old who impacted so many people around the world, around the country, around the nation, someone who strongly believed in, and someone who took the time to be inspired by Gandhi. Someone who believed in justice, peace, someone who believed in nonviolent. I just wanted to take the time to reflect this amazing man, if you, get a, if you guys ever get a chance, take some time to look at some of the old videos of him as a child, documentaries and stuff. So you guys have to visit his home, his childhood home. You have to come to the site. So I just wanna say thank you guys for tuning in and, and I had to interrupt this video and I just had to come home and reflect. First off, I want to say thank you guys for hanging out with me. I want to say thank you guys for tuning in to my channel. One thing I want you guys to always do is to always don't stop. Keep going.